Fellas, how do you like it? Terrific. Wow. All right. I wrote it for the state of reception tonight. What are you going to call it? It's going to be called, Look What You've Done to Me, and it's to be dedicated to Bob Terry. Well, and it occurs to me, Ted, that inasmuch as the theaters are giving the dance, well, wouldn't it be more appropriate to dedicate it to them instead? Ah, oh, quiet, Egghead. Best edition. If the theater girls want a tune, let them dream up their own. Well, I just thought that possibly... Save you thinking for the correct answers for the theme I've got to write in the morning. Petty gold. <laughs> okay, fellas, stay on the downbeat. for an anatomy exam. You fellas all know Buck Wing, the crew manager? I gotta see Frankie right away. It's a matter of life and death. What's it about? What's up? Well, it's pretty private, but... Take it easy, Mr. Franken. Take it easy. Is this necessary? Well, certainly. How am I going to learn anything about anatomy if I don't investigate? I don't know. I've been investigated by experts before, but they never got this personal. Take it easy now, Mr. Franker. You ain't playing around with no eight ball. Oh, relax. Say, Jeff, you know, anatomy is a wonderful thing. Do you know how the head is formed? Well, uh, offhand, I would say it sort of starts at the base of the spine and works its way up into the lump. Hey, Frankie, I got to talk to you. Go on, beat it, will you, fellas? Can't you see I'm boning up? And you don't care who bones he uses, either. It's important. There's something terrible that's happened. Something terrible's gonna happen if you don't get out of here. It's about Bob Terry. That's right. The new stroke for the crew. He's been drafted. What? That's a fact. We just got this wire. He's in the Army. Holy smoke, the Army. The greatest stroke in the country. The best chance Raleigh ever had of winning the championship. He has to get himself yanked into the army. Couldn't we bail him out? There must be something we can do. Sure, sure. Write the president a letter. Tell him to call out the whole defense program. At least until, until after the racing season. Think he'll do it? Oh, shut up, will you? Well, after all those preparations, our girls are going to be off us for good. Frankly, turn that Theta Newhouse upside down to welcome Terry. Yeah. I guess you'll have to tell him, Frankie. I haven't got the heart. Me? Hey. Why me? You're the president of the house. You tell him. Oh, it's the coxswain of the crew. That's your job. What y'all looking at me for? I just work here. 
Pardon me for suggesting, but misery loves company. Why don't you both tell him? Well, is it a deal? It's a deal. Get the car, Jeff. Yes. Well, come on, let's get it over with. Compared with this, bucking the Standish line would be a pleasure. Cheer up, fellas. It'll all come out in the wash. What's the laundryman? Always a laundryman. Hiya, Frankie. Hi, Hi, babes. How's my favorite crewman? Well, to tell you the truth, your favorite crewman's not so hot. In fact, we both don't feel so hot. Aw, that's a shame. What's the matter? Working too hard? Well, you see, uh, it's like this. Uh, Buck's got something he wants to tell you, kids. Now, wait a minute, Frankie. What is it? Something about Bob Carey? Yeah, that's it. Go ahead and tell him, Buck. Yeah. Well, I'd like to, girls, but it's nothing that uh, Frankie and Tad wouldn't rather tell you themselves. Oh, no, Buck. Oh, that's all right. You go ahead, Buck. I got to run along now and do some research for history tomorrow. See you later. So long, Buck. Bye. Hey, Buck, stick around. You know what we're up against. Good luck, fellas. He's acting funny. What's the big news he was going to tell us? Is it about Bob Terry? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of. We got a wire from him today. Oh, then he will be here. Gee, Tad, I can't tell you how thrilled we all are over at the house. The biggest catch of the season, and you've given them to us. Every sorority on the campus is green with envy, positively green. Did you compose some special music like you said you would? <laughs> yes. Atta boy, I knew you wouldn't let us down. You never have yet. No, I wouldn't let you down. Frankie, would we? That, uh, no, no. Oh, you're sweet. My gosh, Bess, look what time it is, and we've got a million things to do. Well, we just dropped by to say hello. See you tonight. Don't be late. And don't forget to bring Bob Terry. Oh, no. Of course not. Well, here we is, gentlemen. Ain't much to look at, but we ran the goal. Now what? Well, there's only one thing we can do. Find Bob Terry. Are you crazy? I don't know where you gentlemen's going looking, but you better be conservative. Because if I get more than five miles out of this creep, I'll be getting it on borrowed time. Oh, quiet, Jeff. We're trying to think. Now, what's all this stuff about finding Bob Terry? I suppose you think we're magicians or something. No, we're just a couple of chumps. And if we show up at that dance tonight without Terry, we're going to be a couple of dead ones. Well, you know that's impossible. No, it isn't. Look, how about a substitute? Oh, no, that gag wouldn't last five minutes. These gals aren't morons. No, I mean find somebody to take Terry's place just for the evening. The Faders have their fun, and we're heroes. And then what? Well, tomorrow he can disappear, draft it. Nobody will get hurt that way. That's what you always say, Mr. Frankie. Anytime nobody gets hurt around here, it's always me. Come on, come on, let's go. Hey, for the love of Mike, Jeff, take it easy. People ride steadier than that. Not without a transfusion. Stop the car, quick! Is that quick enough? What's a big idea, Frankie? Get a load of that guy over there. Well, you think he was hoisting a popsicle instead of a safe? All right, so he's strong. Still no reason to almost break a fella's neck. Why, Tad, he's terrific. Hey, wait a minute. You're not thinking of Sandow over there. Nobody else. Gentlemen, I give you the answer to Thetis' prayer. Bob Terry. So that's Mr. Terry. He didn't get drafted after all, huh? Wish somebody had drafted you. Oh, look at him, Frankie. He's not the type. What do you care, as long as he's not a Ubangi? Come on. Hey. Hey, can we talk to you a minute? Can I give you a hand? No. Well, you sure I can't help you? No, what do you mugs want anyway? Oh, well, you see, we're from Raleigh University. And oh, we... college sprouts, huh? Well, I don't need any magazines. Say, listen. Listen what? Nothing. That's what I thought. Go on, Scram. I got to work to do. Okay, okay. We thought you'd like to make ten dollars. If I... Uh, how much? Ten bucks. Doing what, uh, legitimate or otherwise? You're pretty legitimate. Well, uh, what do you guys want me to do? Beat somebody up? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Uh, we want you to impersonate somebody. Well, you know, pretend you're somebody else. Oh, I catch on. Uh, like I was a mobster on the lamb and didn't want no one to know who it was. <laughs> yeah, that's it. In a vague sort of a way. Say, what kind of a monkey is this bird I'm supposed to be? 
Well, he was a crewman. Have you ever rowed? Sure. I had a pony when I was a kid. Oh, no, no. He means row a boat. Uh, not me, pal. I can't even look at a boat without getting seasick. If that's what I got to do, the deal's off. That's all right. Don't let him worry. You don't have to row any boats. You sure? Absolutely. All you have to do is pretend like you do. That's all. Mm, that better be all. Look. Hey, by the way, what's your name? Herc Bevins. The Herc chart for Hercules. <laughs> well, glad to know you, Herc. But from now on, it's Terry. Bob Terry. Come on. Oh, look, fellas. Quiet, Frosh. You're lucky you still got your underwear. The last time I wore one of these monkey suits was at Jaime Fugel's funeral. <laughs> well, we sure had fun in those days. How do I look? Beautiful. Ravish. You ain't kidding either. You know, it ain't everybody can wear an outfit like this. You're telling me. Forget it, kid. You're okay. Sure, you're a credit to old Kappa Psi. I don't know why, Frankie, but something tells me this is a big mistake. Well, take it easy, Buck. We've got to do it to save our faces. You ain't going to have no faces left if some girls find out he ain't the real Mr. Terry. Yeah, well, they're not going to find out. Unless somebody in this room tells them. Well, that's not the point. Terry's an educated man and a great athlete. Suppose somebody starts asking him questions. Now, look, Herc, we're dependent on you. You know that, don't you? Sure, I never let down a pal in my life. That's it, that's fine. Now, look, have you got everything straight? Straight as a die. My name's um, Bob Terry, right? I'm terrific. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fine, Herc, but, uh, you know, don't overdo it. I'm top man on the rowing team. I got a stroke. Ooh, no, you are the stroke. That's right, I'm a rower. I'm a killer dealer with those oars. Anything could have happened? Oh, well, they'll be here. I hope. Well, this is it. Keep your fingers crossed, Jeff. If I cross them any harder, Mr. Frankie, I'll get bunions. Now, look, you sure you got everything straight? It's in the bag. Boy, will I give those maternity sisters a run for their money. Oh, come on, come on. You don't have to tell me. Bob Terry. Hiya, Cook. You boys will just wait here a minute and I'll get things ready. Who's the blimp? That happens to be Mrs. Weems, the house mother. All those gals are kids? Oh. attention everybody please I'd like to have you meet the young gentleman for whom this reception is being given Mr. Bob Terry isn't he good looking not bad not bad at all folks uh, kids Bob's a little tired after his long trip and he wanted me to tell you to go ahead and enjoy yourself and have a good time just like he wasn't here matter with you, you big dope. I told you to let me do all the talking. I was only hello, trying Frankie. to... Hello, Frankie. Oh, hello. Hey, how about meeting the ladies, Frankie? I'm your pal, ain't I? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Miss Bess Martin, Miss Midge Lawrence, Bob Terry. What's new, babes? We're so glad you could come, Bob. We thought you'd never get here. Did you have a nice trip? Are you going to work out with the crew tomorrow? We do hope you like our party. Do you dance? Hey, hey, come on, break it up, will you? Can't you see Bob's tired? How do you like that? Tired. I never felt better in my life. You're not too tired to dance, are you, Bob? Maybe too tired to dance with a dish like you is something I never get. Now, 
Will you excuse us a minute? I want to talk to Bob. Anyway, lay off, will you? That's my girl. Is that a fact? Yeah. Brother, you sure can't pick him. Slip of your dukes and start hanging on, sister. We're off to startle the natives. Oh, uh, don't feel bad, sister. You're next. There's no sense in wasting all this good music. No, thanks, Mitch. Don't put yourself out. But don't feel too bad, Tootsie. You could have the next dance. Look at that boy, will you? He's dancing with Gus like he's got a mortgage on it. Who do you think he is, anyway? Bob Terry. Right to the teeth. Yeah, something tells me we're in for it. Yeah? Well, don't worry. Tomorrow he gets drafted, remember? And tomorrow's a long way off. What can happen between now and then? Guess who? You can just take them feelers away any time, Bluefoot. You ain't fooling nobody. I ain't trying to. I know it was me all the time. Just make sure you know it was me. Here, yeah, make yourself useful. Start carving. On who? On that ham. Oh, Malvini. Yeah, I is all spruced up and quivering to coat my gal, and you puts me to work on carving dead meat. You gonna be dead meat if you don't shut up. You ain't got no business here, no how. Huh? You ain't no fraternity, boy. I beg your pardon. What is this? I wouldn't know. This is what us in the social swim calls a pledge button. Is that so? To a fraternity? Indubitably. Well, no. <laughs> That's me. Have some grub, honey pie. Yeah, I don't care if I do. <laughs> I'm swinging, eh, pal? Hey, this babe's all right. You sure give out with a wicked hook, baby, don't you? Hey, Bess, Tad would like to see you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Hey, it's a pleasure, Toots, but hurry back, will you? Hey, you don't believe in overdoing a thing, do you? I'm just having fun like you told me. Sure, sure, that's all right, but why at somebody else's expense? Oh, you worry too much, pal. Ah. Uh, hey, this stuff ain't nothing but colored water. Ain't you got some bourbon or something to brighten that mess up with, sister? Of course not, you dope. Don't you know you're not allowed to have intoxicating liquors at a sorority dance? Oh, minors, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh, hi, Itsy Bitsy. I've been looking all over for you. We got the next dance, you know. Have we? Uh-huh. And I mean it. Oh, all right. I was only trying to make him feel at home. Well, try making me feel at home for a change. Maybe I like it, too. number will be a specialty my Midge Lawrence. Why, that's me. Pardon me, Miss Lawrence, but I wouldn't keep my public waiting. Frankie Monahan, I could... Pardon me, Bob, I have to do a number. Go on, the dance will keep. Give out, I'm all ears. Since you came along, look what you have done. 
to me. I act foolish as can be. I do things that puzzled me. Since you came along, yes, it was you, you, you. Knocked me for a row of pins. And started my head to do in spins until I found that I went round like a merry-go-round. Look what you have done to me. I know I don't want to be so persistent and fancy free. Since you came along. Why, Coach Walsh and Professor Whittaker, how nice of you to come to our party. I heard Bob Terry was over here. I thought I'd like to meet the boy informally and sort of put him at his ease. I see. Of course, he's right inside. Bob, this is uh, Professor Whittaker. What's doing, Bob? And Coach Walsh. Crew. Oh, that's so? Howdy, Coach. I'm glad to have you with us, Bob. I've heard a good deal about your record. Uh, Coach, you ain't heard nothing. If the facts were known about my record, it would knock your eye out. <laughs> so you're the great Bob Terry. That's me, Pop. With capital T. But you can call me Herc. Herc? Sure, you know. Short for Hercules. Hercules. How do you like that? A college property ain't even heard of Hercules. He's the guy that carried the big ball around on the back of his neck. <laughs> You mean Atlas? You trying to tell me who I mean? Uh, hello, Coach. Hi, Professor. Hello, Glad boy. To see you. Bob, are you still here? Sure. Where do you think I'd be? Get him. Yeah, but you want to be home in bed. Huh? Well, certainly. You, you can't keep late hours and train, too, you know. I should say not. You've got to be fresh so you can be in there pitching in the morning. Oh, I ain't sleepy. Well, we better be running along. Good night, Coach. Good night. Good night, Good night Mr. Weed. Get me again, Midnight. Yes, sir. And my name's Jeff. I won't hold that against you. For the last time, Herc, you can't get away with it. It's impossible. It'd never work out. They'd be on you in a minute. The whole thing's ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Now, why don't you be a nice fellow, Herc? Forget about it. You've got to. Keep talking, boys. Don't do no good, Mr. Frankie. Them boys just roll off his back like a duck. You said it, pal. I didn't ask to be no college kid. This was your idea. But now that I am, I like it. So I'm sticking. See? Why? What for? Oh, maybe I want to improve my mind. It could stand it. Uh, maybe I like being a big shot, and maybe I like all those pretty little co-eds. Hey, wait a minute, you. Suppose we don't let you get away with this, then what? One peep out of you, sonny boy, and I'll smear this stunt of yours from one end of the campus to the other. I'll make it so tough on you, Wyatt. Oh, I... don't say it. Don't say any more. He's got a hook, Frankie. Yeah, looks that way. How about his studies? Bob Terry was an honor man at prep school. Sure, why didn't I think of that? Well, if you stay here, you've got to attend classes. And... I'll get through my studies, all right. You little kids will see to that. Oh, Herc. I sure hate to think what Coach Wash is going to say when he find out what we done gone and done to his crew. Crew? That's right. If you stay at Raleigh, you've got to go out for the crew. What's that? Didn't you tell me once that you didn't like boats? I get sick just thinking about them. Oh, well, isn't that too bad, fellas? You know, when you go out for the crew, they take you for a nice long boat ride every day. You kidding? No, look. You're out in the water in a 60-foot shell. It's only two feet wide. It's so narrow that it dips with every little ripple. The sun is beating down on your head. You're, you're getting awful dizzy. Your, your tongue is dry. You're putting all you've got into your oar. Stroke. Stroke. And the boat's going back and forth. Back and forth. Your, your insides are all churned up. And your boat's going back. Stop, and forth. don't say uh, I can't stand it. How do you like it, Herc? It's awful. That's just when the water's calm. You ought to be out there when it's rough. Please, oh, I can't take it. I... Well, Herc, you still want to stay at Raleigh? Yes. It's do or die for dear old Raleigh. I'll row that boat if it kills me. Oh. Hold it, hold it, hold it. 
no use. He'll never get onto it like this. I think what he needs is a seat that'll slide back and forth with a stroke like they have on the shelf. Well, if Mr. Herb don't mind riding with me while I clean house, he can sit on my carpet sweeper. Say, Jeff, you've given me an idea. Uh-oh, here it comes. We're gonna play piggyback. No, we ain't either. Not unless you tell me first who's gonna be the piggy. Don't say it, Mr. Frank. I can see it in your eyes. Come here. All right, now get down here. Now, wait a minute. What about my self-respect? I've been set on enough as it is. One more customer's not gonna hurt you. Now, come on, we haven't got all night. Every time I open my mouth, I get took. It don't say nothing about this in the wagon, I... Come on, get on. Look, how long is this dizzy routine gonna keep up anyway? Until you learn to stroke a shell. Oh, anybody can row a boat, and besides, I'm tired. Get him, he's tired. You haven't even rode a mile yet. What are you going to do when you get out there in that bay in stiff competition? It's a three-mile grind at top speed. Oh, collapse. Not on me. I thought so. It's softy. It's no use, Herc. You might as well give up. The coach will kick you off the squad at the first workout. And that means kick out of school. That's what you think. If you and them other monkeys can stand the gaff, so can I. Give me that oar. I'll whirl you around this bay and nothing flat. Take it easy, now. This ain't no bobby chair. Let's go. Okay. Right, move just like a seat. That's it, Jeff. Hip, hip, hip. Give me all you got, her. Come on. Hip, 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 hip. Oh, good thing to me. Get up, Jeff. What's the matter with you? I can't. The boat done sunk. Hip, hip. Come on, her. Come on. Get in line. Hip, hip, hip. What's the matter with him? They handle those skulls like old women. You know how it is, Coach. Uh, first day out and all that. <laughs> I've never seen anybody that bad at any time. Hip! Come on, her. Come on! Hip! Hip! Look at Terry there. Supposed to be the best prep stroke in the country. You'd think he never saw a boat before. You don't know the half of it. What's that? I said, uh, I mean, maybe they use smaller boats at the prep school. Ah, uh, what are you talking about? Hey, you! Terry! What's the matter with you? Get that oar out of the water. Shut up, blubbermouth. I'll wrap it around your neck. Save your wits, Terry. You heard what he said. Come on. Start bending on that oar. I can't, Frankie. I don't feel so good. Well, I expected that. What's that? Just for your benefit. He will either cure you or kill you. Here. Tastes like chocolate. Well, that's fine. Come on, let's go. Hit. Hit. Sorry, Herc, take it easy. You just caught a crab. Now, look at that. Terry, the great oarsman, catches a crab. That wasn't Terry, Coach. It was Tad. Don't tell me. I saw it with my own eyes. That was Terry. No, sir. It was Tad Lane. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm sorry, Coach. My glasses. I've lost my glasses. Gosh, I I'm sorry. I can't see. They're gone. I, I can't see. Well, that was a special prescription, too, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know when I can get another pair. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, maybe I can check the crew for you, Coach. An old Chinese proverb says, uh, better to see with eyes of youth than not to see at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, Buck. That's it. You watch him and report to me. Bad luck to call our first day's practice. Sure is. Uh, they, uh, they're doing all right. Frankie's up the count, and Terry's pulling ahead like a champion. Yes. That's the boy, Terry. That's the way. Pull like that champion they said you were. Hit. 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 What are you looking so worried about? Well, why shouldn't we be? Herc doesn't know a thing about biology. So much the better. Let him flunk out. Then we're rid of him. Yeah, well, you didn't see what we saw today. He's got the makings of a great stroke. I know he has. I watched him every minute. With a little practice, he'd be terrific. That beats me. Don't be surprised if it beats Standish in the big race this year. The 
afternoon, we will renew our experiments in this section. For our uh, purposes, I brought to class a rather handsome specimen of the common bullfrog, known to science as genus Arama agigante. Hmm. Uh, where, where did I put those glasses? On your forehead, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Martin. <laughs> yes, now, where, 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 where was I? Oh, 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 yes, the frog. Venus, <laughs> uh, Rama, Gigante. Now, in this bag, this bag, I have a frog. What? <laughs> but I ate my lunch, didn't I? <gasps> I ate something. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What a relief. I remember now. I ate in the cafeteria. <laughs> come, come, come now. Back to work. The dissection and study of the genus Rama, common bullfrog. But you can tell us why the frog is such a remarkable specimen for dissection. Uh, Miss to Terry. Huh? What did you say? Mr. Terry, I am not in the habit of chewing my carriage twice. Why is the frog the perfect specimen for dissection? I don't know, unless maybe because uh, their legs are such good eating. This is not a class in cookery, Mr. Terry. We're concerned here solely with functions biological. Mr. Monaghan, perhaps you can enlighten Mr. Terry. The frog is used for dissectional purposes because of its close resemblance to the human body. No fooling. Don't look like nobody I ever knew. <laughs> Mr. Terry, either you are grossly fatuous or incontinently stupid. If it weren't for your excellent scholastic record at your preparatory school, I would have dismissed you at once. As it is, I will give you one more chance to redeem yourself. You will appear here tomorrow ready to dissect this frog. Genus Rama, Gigantus, the class is dismissed. <laughs> You had to open your big mouth. What was I going to do? The old goon asked me a question, didn't he? You could have said you were unprepared. Because frog legs make such good eat. All right, all right. So I pulled a boner. What I'm worried about is how am I going to dissect that frog? I don't know anything about frogs. Well, don't worry about that, sweetheart. You're gonna, but good. You better not try anything this afternoon. We might get caught. We'll do it tonight. Tonight, but... But I got a date tonight. You said it. Right here with little genus Rob. The big game of the year with us, the odds on favorites. That's on a kind of me being in the game. I'm the finger man, see? Finger man? Yeah, you know, the hot shot. So why don't we bust onto the field with me leading my gang against that bunch from Penn? Penn State? No, State Penn. The crowd's going crazy. They're yelling for me to kick in with a touchdown, okay? The pitcher cuts loose with a stiff curve. But, Bob, you don't have pitchers in football. Yeah, well, what do they call that guy that makes all the passes? I thought we'd find you here. Hello, Tan. Hiya, Frankie. Bob's been telling us the most marvelous stories about his exploits on the gridiron. Ha! <laughs> now he's a football star. I'll say he is. Did he ever tell you about the time he made six touchdowns in a row before the whistle blew? Oh, that wasn't nothing. You're telling us. Well, you've had your fun. Now, come on, we've got some work to do. You go do it. I'll stay right here. Hey, over my dead body. He's got a cramp in that anatomy test He's somewhere. He's still staying here. Come on, tear yourself loose, will you? You heard what the lady said. I'm staying. Oh, hey, well, how about that test tomorrow? You take it for me. Okay, okay, if that's the way you want it. But it's your funeral. Come on, Ted. Goodbye, Bye, boys. Goodbye. Oh, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was on the one-yard line. The bases were loaded. It was third down and two strikes. What a day. Are you sure you understand everything? It's running out my ears. Look, fellas, couldn't we just forget the whole thing? I got the jitters. Not a chance. The prof said you were going to dissect that frog and you're gonna. Couldn't we just shoot it and be done with it? Hey, get a load of this. Due to the wanton destruction of the laboratory by unknown vandals last night, classes in biology two will be suspended indefinitely. Professor Whitaker, a substantial reward will be paid for any information leading to the arrest of these ruffians. Boy, what a break. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, 
Quite a coincidence, huh, Buck? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, old Chinese proverbs say, man who look gift horse in mouth, liable to find Chinaman in woodpile. <laughs> <laughs> you were right, Buck. That carries the greatest stroke I've ever seen. Yes, sir. Tip. Tip. Come on, come on. Pick him up and lay him down. Tip. Tip. Come on, gang. Keep it up. The coach is all right. Tip. 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 Uh, lesson number 64. In it, the metatarsus, uh, the metatarsus comprises when all the digits is present, five elongated bones in the foot, or a skeleton between the phalanges of the detarsus. What's the tarsus? Well, if I'm mistaken, that's what you're sitting on. The, uh, the metatarsus comprises, when all digits is present, of five long bones between the uh, phalanges and the tarsus, uh, which you set on. Oh. <laughs> the collegiate racing season draws to a close this Saturday. Raleigh U, the year's most sensational crew, under the brilliant stroke of Bob Terry, goes to the starting gun, a two-to-one favorite, over its traditional rival and toughest competitor, Standish. Victory in this race might mean the national championship for Raleigh. Gee, the national championship. Didn't I tell you that Herc was a great stroke? You didn't tell me anything. I saw that arm his before you even knew he had one. You saw it. Listen, if you'll remember... Oh, hi, Coach. Hello, Coach. Hello, boy. We're just looking at the morning paper. Have you seen it? It says that we're favored two to one to win the big race Saturday. If we win that race, maybe the national championship. That's pretty good, huh? Pretty good. It's terrific. The greatest crew Raleigh's ever had. It'd be a shame if I can't hold it together. You can't hold it together. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Coach. I don't get you. What do you mean? I mean you two. Just had a talk with the dean. Unless your marks improve, I've had orders to drop you from the crew. Oh, but you wouldn't do it, would you? Uh, Coach, wait a minute. Drop from the crew? There ain't no justice. How do you like that? We break our backs making that guy the greatest stroke in the country. Ruin our grade so he can be an honor student. Where do we wind up? In the soup. Yeah, up to our necks. Oh, why didn't I stick to biology? Well, at least there's one consolation. Things can't be any worse. Hello, Tad. Hello, Frankie. Hi. Could, could I see you a moment, Tad? <laughs> yeah, sure. What's on your mind? Well, I, I don't know how to tell you this, Tad, but... Tell me what? Well, you know how the world changes. Progress, new ideas. <laughs> hey, what is this, a lesson in economics? No, I'm just trying to show how things... And people change. All right, they change. So what about it? Well, please don't take this too, too hard, Tad. But here. And what's this for? Well, it's not fair to string you along any further, Tad. You're too fine a boy for that, and I'm... Well, I'm going to marry someone else. Mary? You're going to... How much your mother, what'll she think? Well, what's that got to do with it? Nothing, only you're so young. Who's the man? Bob Terry. Bob Terry? Boy, that dirty double crosser. Oh, please, Tad, don't. I'd feel just awful if you two boys fought over me. I want you and Bob always to be good friends. Good friends. Mm. Please don't think unkindly of me, Tad. It's for the best. Goodbye. And all the luck in the world. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, Frankie, and all the luck in the world. Sure, thanks. You too? Yeah, me too. Well, he can't marry both of them, can he? I'd like to see him try it. Yeah, so would I. There's a law against bigamy in this state, isn't there? Oh, sure. There's got to be. Let's do a little dreaming of castles in Spain. Have yarn champagne. Vacations way up in Maine. Let's do a little dreaming. 
dreaming. Let's do a little dreaming of Velvety Jane. Niagara's Cascade. Car that is fully paid. Let's do a little dreaming. Great girl. Oh, Crazy about oh, it. baby. How I wish I didn't have to wish it. Baby, I can take it, just go ahead and dish it to me. Let's do a little dreaming of cocktails and swings. Marie in the spring. A Tiffany diamond ring. Let's do a little dreaming. Let's do a little dreaming of well-behaved dice. Uh-uh, of shoes and rice. Of gin that is cheap as ice. Come on, honey, let's do a little dreaming. Won't you, honey? Mm -hmm. Will you? Mm -hmm. Now let's do a little dreaming. Of you in a tray of horses not played. A razor without a blade. Let's do a little dreaming. Oh, oh, baby. How I wish I didn't have to fake it. Mm -hmm, baby. Go ahead and dish it out, cause I can take it. Well, let's do a little dreaming of debts I wish paid. Is you testing the haze? Woman, is you calling a spade a spade? Let's do a little dreaming. Let's do a little dreaming. Well, here we are. Back home at dear old Campus I. Hi, fellas. Glad to know you. Just in time for the big party, huh? Say, you know, it looks like the boys are doing all right by old Campus I, eh, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, go ahead right in, fellas. Enjoy yourself. We sure will. Yeah, you don't have to bother about us. We won't. <clears throat> Say, by the way, lad, I want you to meet Bullet Bill Miller. Used to call him the fastest human. Ain't so fast as he was, and always was a little doubt that he was human. <laughs> <laughs> Great guy, though. <laughs> Broke the hundred in nine six. He did. <laughs> I was pressed into it. <laughs> uh, this is Speed Dorman, the terror of the gridiron a few years back. Glad to know you. Hey, those were the good old days. I remember a play we used to have. Uh, tell us. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. They sure look young, don't they? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Frankie. Who is them two gentlemen? They act like they own the place. Well, they're just a couple of old grads that came back for the reunion before the big race tomorrow. You know, Jeff, there's what is known as a necessary evil. Like playing horses, huh? Hey, aren't you Bob Terry? That's me, in the flesh, pal. Didn't I tell you? Put her there, brother. Capacized proud of you, son. Yes, sir. Hello, Butch. What town do you belong to? Shake hands with old Bob, Speed. Hiya, Bob, old boy. <laughs> Going to win the big race for old Raleigh tomorrow, eh, boy? Yeah. Ah, you darn... Hey, feel that arm. Just like old Slugger, huh? Old Slugger <laughs> Wilson. Boy, there was a stroke. <laughs> yeah. You just bet your bottom dollar he was. Yes, sir. Slug Wilson. Built like an army tank, only with a wider tread. Did you ever hear about his last race against Standish? Tell him, Bill. Well, it was like this. The Standish Bunch were tough babies this year, and we... Is dance, Bob? <laughs> it sure is, baby. Uh, you know how it is, fellas. Tootsie, you are a lifesaver. How do you like that? I don't like that. I repeat, my interests at Raleigh are strictly academic. But you don't understand what this means to the school, Professor. It's the first time we've had a chance to win the big race since 1926. 28. Yeah, when Slug Wilson was stroked. Well, thank you. You're welcome. If you take Frankie and Tad off the team now, our chances of winning will just fly right out the window. Hey, who's going to take who off whose team? I am. Their averages do not merit athletic privileges. Averages? What have averages got to do with it? They forget all that stuff the minute they get out of school anyhow. I beg your pardon. It's a fact. Look at me. I forgot everything I ever learned here. Yeah, and he forgot it before he left here. <laughs> Obviously. Look, as an alumnus of Raleigh University, I demand that those two boys remain on the team. Gentlemen, if you don't mind, this is a private conversation. All right, but we came all the way from Des Moines to see this race. Yeah, and we want to see Raleigh win it. We'll do our best to satisfy your desires. 
That's all. Couldn't you put them on probation, Professor? I'm sure their averages will improve. I'd like to, Coach. But after all, I have my own duty to perform. What about your duty to Raleigh? Very well. I'll make the exception just this one. But mark you, if their averages do not improve definitely, off they go. Can I have the next dance? Well, I'd like to, Frankie, but... Well, you're so small. So small? So small? Anyhow, Ted wants me to sing the next number. Women. That's what I get for going to a co-educational school. Give me a slug of punch. Coming up. Howdy. Having a nice time, little fella? Are you? How come? Well, just Mr. Bob Terryman. He ain't only taking Mr. Frank's gal, but he's been taking up so much of their time that they about to get flunked and throw it off the crew. Please, 16, you swear that he's beyond compare at please, 16. When every glance speaks of romance, you dance alone to love. Suppose me and you go outside and do a bit of the Uh-uh. Not me, brother. I've been standing since morning, and my feet's killing me. Is that so? You know what the trouble with you is? No. Why, you got the metatarsis trouble. Metatarsis? Mm-hmm. What's that? You don't know what metatarsis is? Well, I'll tell you. Now, you see, metatarsis is when all the digits in the foot is present, with five elongated bones between the volantes, except February, which has 26. <laughs> My goodness. How come you know all these big words? Yeah, how come? You student here? Well, you see, I'm the tutor for Mr. Herc. Herc? Mm-hmm. That's Mr. Bob Terry. He ain't very bright. Mr. Tad and Mr. Frankie and me, we have to give him lessons so we can keep him on the crew. You mean those boys have been coaching Terry through school? Uh, them and me, with me as the head coach. That's why they've been flunking their own classes, huh? I don't get it, Speed. Terry was an honor man in prep school. You know... I smell something fishy around here, Bill. So do I. Speed, something tells me we owe it to dear old Raleigh to look into this matter. Yeah. Why do they have to coach Terry? Yeah, why? Why? Well, because when they found him in the streets, he was... Uh Uh-oh. Excuse me, y'all. I got to go. I see y'all. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, we'd like to talk to you. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. That's all right. We want to talk to you just the same. Don't we, Speed? We certainly do. You better come along with us. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. Honest, mister, I'm ignorant. Now, don't y'all take me away. Where y'all gonna take me? I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. Honest, gentlemen, I'm the stupidest man I ever seen. Jeff, did you ever hear of the Inquisition? What's that? That's what happens to people that won't talk. Is that so? Jeff, 
Did you ever get your thumb caught in a ringer? Or your foot stepped on by an elephant? Uh, is you gentlemen trying to intimidate me? Oh, perish the thought. But it's just a mild idea of what might happen if you don't tell us all you know about Bob Terry. Or could not talk about myself. That's more of my alley. Look, I know a man that owns a ringer. And a man who owns an elephant. An elephant? To step on my feet and I got cones? Mm-mm. Jeff, I think you'd better tell us. Or shall we send for the elephant? Don't do it. Don't do it. I talk. I'll talk. Now, that's better. But remember, I don't know a thing that I'm saying. Twelve o'clock. The race starts in two hours. Look, we said we'd get Frankie and Tad out of this mess, and we've got to do it. Yeah, but what about the race? If we don't clear this thing up, there may not be a race. Boy, I wish old Slugger was here. He'd know what to do. Yeah. Good old Slugger. I wish he'd get here. Gentlemen, it does me proud to announce the arrival of good old Slugger. Slugger! Speed! Slugger's here! <laughs> good old Slugger. <laughs> I knew you'd get here. Boy, are you a sight for sore eyes, and if I got him, look. I hope I'm not too late. You're just in time. To help us iron out an awful mess. Good old Slugger. <laughs> I thought you'd never make it. Well, I was delayed at headquarters at the last minute. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be here yet except for a break. We've been following a notorious bank robber for months, and fortunately, his trail led right here to Raleigh. Bank robber? Here at Raleigh? That's right. You ever see him before? <clears throat> Think you'll find him? Oh, sure. No. Well, uh, what's this mess you fellows want me to help you out of? Oh, nothing. Not a thing. Yeah, <laughs> nothing at all. Well, in that case, let's get down to the race. Uh, <clears throat> on second thoughts, Slugger, old boy, uh, maybe you can help us out. Yeah. Come on upstairs. Talk privately. Okay, fellas, what is it? But make it snappy. We might miss the race. You wouldn't want me to miss seeing Bob Terry, would you? Absolutely not. Would we, Speed? Of course not. <laughs> it's like this, slugger old boy. As a loyal Raleigh man, you'd do anything to see our team win that race today, wouldn't you? Even if it meant sacrificing your duty. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I was uh, afraid you wouldn't. But you do know we think you're the greatest guy that ever was, don't you? Yes, I guess so. And we wouldn't hurt you for the world. However, there comes a time in every man's life when duty is stronger than friendship. Hey, what are you fellows driving at? Just this. Poor Good old, old slugger. a lot happier when this race is over. Yeah, so will I for a lot of reasons. And all of them are named Herc. How much time we got left? I don't know, Tad. A couple minutes, I guess. About ready to go, man? Yeah, that we, we are, are coach. coach. Right there. How are you feeling, Bob? Is that arm okay? <laughs> it's in the pit, Coach. We'll murder him. That's the spirit I like. But don't underestimate Stanley. Huh? They're pretty good, too, you know. Ah, they're still a set. <laughs> what are you eating? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, just candy. Candy? You're eating candy right before a race? Give me that box. Uh-oh. Did you see what he's done? He took away my pills. I'm sick already. Well, don't worry, Herc. I've got more. Oh, you're a pal, Frankie. I don't know what I'd do without you. Neither do I. Yeah, how come you haven't got any more pills? Well, I'll find some someplace. All right, men, this is it. This is the race you've been waiting for. They're ready to line up, coach. Thank you, Buck. 
Now remember, the Standish crew's the one you got to beat. But don't forget that Baldwin and State are in there too, and they're not cream puffs. Frankie, you know all I can tell you about facing the crew. Don't let Standish get away from you, but save your power for those last hundred meters. Yes, sir. All right. Take him away. Let's see if you're as good as I think you are. All right, let's go, gang. Come on, the old pepper now. Right, get out there and go. Right into it. Come on, gang. There we go. That's the Raleigh crew, ladies and gentlemen, passing the stand on the way up to the start. The other three crews are nearing the starting line, and it won't be long now before the intercollegiate eight-hour drawing championship for the Western Conference is decided for another year. Take it easy, Herc. Take it easy. You're working too hard. Save yourself for the big sprint. Don't worry about me. Thanks. You think the girls are watching us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. How about a pill? No, no, wait till you get sick. Oh, I just adore crewmen. Aren't they handsome? Wonderful. They move across the water just like big bugs. The boats, of course, not the crews. They're off to a nice start, folks. All four crews are right in line. 32 oars working in unison as they fight to get away. I know it's tough slugger, old boy, but, but look at us. We're missing the race, too. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bill. Uh, this is Jeff. I'm looking at the race just like you told me to. It's the prettiest thing you ever did see. Hmm? Oh. I know who there is. Because nobody is. But if it does, I'll let you know. Okay, Speed, the race is underway. Let him go. And when you do, you better have a good excuse for this or start running. Well, <clears throat> you see, Slugger, old boy, it was like this. <clears throat> Beginning to look like a two-crew race. Rolly and Stanley are pulling ahead. Never keep up this pace. You won't have anything left for the finish. Uh oh, the grind's beginning to tell on the Raleigh crew. They're falling behind. Come on, gang. Come on. What's the matter with you? Give it to me. Then it's pulling away fast now. The must have been too much for all his Bob Terry. He looks all in. Uh, come on, gang, come on. Please don't loaf on me. You two hurt. What's the matter with you? Give me a pill. Are you sick? I'm dying. Mr. Bill. Old Heck is going to bring home the baby. 
Lincoln for Riley. We're going to win. And Wally made keep that murder of hope. And cross the finish line with Wally the winner. What a race. We did it. We beat him. <laughs> Isn't that Terry the greatest stroke you ever saw? Did I tell you, coach? <laughs> Well, it took a lot of doing, but we made it. You're all right, shipmate. Oh, I want to die. What was in that cell anyway, dynamite? <laughs> you were wonderful, Cam. Oh, Frankie, it was a marvelous race. You're still my favorite crew man. Yeah, are you two crazy? Yeah, what's this all about? Ladies and gentlemen, I have a special announcement to make. I've just been given the information that Bob Terry, who rode the greatest race of his career today, has been summoned by Uncle Sam and will spend the next few years in government service. Good gracious of me.